What we have just derived works great for near discontinuities, but it doesn't really work great in smooth regions. And we can probably see this from the solution over here. So, uh, so in this solution, can you see the obvious place that is not accurate? Can you see a feature of this solution where you, you can point it and say, okay, this should not be the proper behavior? Yes? The sign of the region amplitude to forward regions are Exactly. So look at the slope over here and the gap between the line and y equal to 1. The gap should not exist. Okay. So the the wave is losing magnitude even before the continuity uh, the discontinuity forms. So remember, the before any shock wave forms, the solution follow characteristic lines. And if you follow the characteristic line of this point, of x equal to a quarter, the characteristics should move towards the right, and the solution along the characteristic should be what? Constant, yes. So if you move towards the right along the characteristics, the solution should stay at, at uh, u equal to 1. It should not decay in magnitude. So the fact that the solution gets artificially dissipated is called what? Artificial dissipation, right? So it's a dissipa di diffusion, dissipation error. So dispersion error Dissipation error, remember, dispersion error is moving the wave to the wrong places. Dissipation error is artificially damping down on the waves. The first order upwind or Godunov scheme, they both have a lot of dissipation error in it. And it's pretty obvious uh, in, in this case. So how do we improve upon the scheme to make it higher order? Oops. So the idea comes from a place called a uh, reconstruction. The reconstruction it's saying that we, we already see a one case of reconstruction that is the piecewise constant reconstruction. In the first order upwind scheme and in the good enough scheme, we both have reconstructed the solution from the piecewise volume averages. So, so let's draw three functions. One function is an original function that looks like that. Okay, and then the second is not a function, but just a, a series of numbers that is taking the value of the average. That's probably this point. The average is probably this point, and here is maybe this point, and here maybe that point. So it's taking the volume averages. And the third function is the reconstruction. And the reconstruction is what is not done well in the Godunov scheme. In Godunov scheme, we are doing a piecewise constant reconstruction. We are drawing a, 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 a flat line over each interval that approximates the value of the function. And of course, if you just look at the difference between the green function and the red function, you can see that the approximation is not very good. Right? So the question is, in what way can we perform a better reconstruction of the function, a more accurate reconstructive function? And so, for example, if we want a second order scheme instead of a, just a first order scheme, we can reconstruct the function using just a slightly different way. So instead of just using the function value at this grid point, how can we reconstruct the function to make it better? For example, we can also look at the slope. So if we have the blue point over here, we know the cell average here locally is a monotonically decreasing trend, we can use the difference between this and this and this and this to figure out, okay, can I draw a straight line like that, which which uh, respects 
the average slope between this and this and this and this so that I actually get a better approximation to the red function. So not just using the volume averages, but also using the derivative information which we can infer from the adjacent volume averages. That's a good way to reconstruct the solution to better accuracy. So let's say we have the reconstruction here. We also can probably perform a reconstruction here. The reconstruction here is a little bit more tricky, but maybe something like that. And over here, it may be something like that. Okay. We still have a piecewise continuous function. We no longer have a piecewise constant function, but still it's a piecewise linear function instead. We still need to figure out what is the appropriate flux to use, for example, around this interface where I still have a discontinuity, where here I still have a discontinuity, maybe even larger, right? So what do I do here? I can use exactly the same flux reconstruction scheme. I can still use the same Goodenough numerical flux over here, but instead of using just the piecewise averages, I can use the reconstructed value on the immediately on the left and on the right of that interface. So this is the idea we use to get second order accuracy. Okay. So, for example, um, Hope I have enough time to do that. So, so I can copy my upwind. Yeah, because I know my upwind works in this particular case. I will just uh, use upwind instead of changing that to good enough. Uh, so, reconstruct upwind. Okay. So I so okay so here instead of just using the solution u to compute the flux I'm going to reconstruct at the interfaces all right so So for example, I can compute the du dx to be, we are going to use central difference here, u of 3 to n minus u of 1 to n minus 2, divided by 2 delta x. Oops. All right. So I have my du dx and my u at the right of the, of the cell is going to be, uh, let me see, u at the right of the cell. Okay, so so let me let me also du dx is equal to. I also want to u at the uh, first cell. I I will just use a uh, first order difference minus u one divided by dx on the first cell, and uh, du dx that's in the middle. And uh, u of n minus u of n minus 1 for the last cell. So u at the right of the cell is just equal to u plus du dx times 0.5 times dx. Right, so this is my reconstructed value on the immediately on the left of ui plus half. u at the left of the cell is equal to u minus du dx times this. All right. So when I compute my f, I also have my f at the right of the cell is equal to this and uh, my f equal to left cell is equal to that yeah so so this this is still my first order upwind scheme if you use good enough scheme these are 
something you don't actually want to compute, right? You want to compute the F as you want to look at the U right cell and U left cell, and you want to compute the maximum. You want to compare which one is larger, and you want to depend on which one is larger. You want to compute the maximum or minimum of the flux uh, within that range. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if we have. We probably don't have time to do that. Um, so. Okay. Uh, so let me just uh, do one thing before we uh, we finish. Let's, so let's uh, let's don't do that yet. So the one thing we want to do before we finish is that when we look at the shock speed, what you should we look at? Right. We want to use u of left cell for the range of two to end. We want to use f uh, left cell of I plus one because we are looking at the interface I plus half over here. We want to use the the value immediately to the right of the interface is the value at the left of the next cell, and the value immediately to the left of the interface is the value at the right side of the cell immediately to the left. So this is the proper shock speed to use. Okay. And uh, f interface is duh, 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 duh. if the shock speed is greater than zero coming from coming from the left, I want to use the left so f which is f right cell of i minus one. If the if the shock is if the information coming from the right, I want to use the value immediate to the right, which is the left cell of of i. Okay. So that is going to give us a second order uh, reconstruction. So let's do. Da, da, da. Hopefully. Reconstruct, not reconstruction. Do, 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 do. Yeah, here, which line? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we can see that this no longer diminishes, right? So uh, let me run it longer. I will tell you. I still will have a problem at the shock wave. Okay. I still have. I'm still going to see problems at the shockwave. It's a little bit better than what we see last time, but like this still appears. And we will see that we have to switch the scheme to a first order scheme near the shockwaves and uh, uh, keep the reconstruction to second order away from the shockwaves. And that's the limiter we will be talking about in the next lecture.